April deer chores. This is awesome because we're finally hearing birds. We're almost to April right now and it's uh, getting beautiful out. We still have six to eight inches of snow or more on our north facing slopes and no snow on the south facing. The no snow on the south facing is awesome. We're starting to see the ground. Our fields are mostly opened up too. So we have some areas of drifts that are still three feet tall, three feet deep, but um, really getting it down to where you might actually be able to go shed hunting this next weekend. We're hoping. Right now there's just a ton of snow and we have a lot of north facing slopes that have good deer antlers on them because of the food sources they're adjacent to or the type of cover they have and uh, we want to make sure we can get out there. So more of we don't want to just walk the south face and we want to walk all of it when we're out there. So we're going to We'll probably wait till this weekend to actually do our shed hunting. We've only been out once on the property, but a lot of stuff to do in April, a lot of stuff to keep up with. So we're going to be doing that, um, working hard into April. And I'll start out number seven because I'm excited about this. It has nothing to do with whitetails and wildlife, but fishing. You know, I start going fishing. Uh, we already out on the Mississippi. We caught, uh, boy, Brandon. Uh, Wes, Jack Turner for Family Traditions, Jen and I, we caught over 90 perch, but some big jumbles, 12, 13 inches, maybe a 14 incher in there. Um, we had a big fish fry and we're having another one tonight with Dylan and uh, pretty, pretty awesome. But I go walleye fishing uh, starting in April and so I really, starting in May mostly, but um, really need to get the gear in order. Uh, it seems like we're going fishing for the first time and I'm staying up till 3 a.m. that first night in Canada, getting everything together, respooling um my rods and reels and getting everything organized but i think i'm gonna do that a month early now this that'd be that'd be a smart thing i know dylan was talking about he's looking for it. He's, that's on his list too so gotta get the boat out exactly <laughs> that's what i'll be doing too but anyway simazine for those of you who haven't sprayed in simazine like us that has still have frozen snow and ice in the ground um it'll be time to spray simazine in early to mid march and or early to mid april in most locations so that's a great time uh, to do it. It's right in that time before spring green up. You spray simazine before spring green up. And you don't spray simazine in food plot areas. You can spray all the simazine you want on established switchgrass, new switchgrass, seeds of switchgrass. It will not kill it. So a lot of people say, when can I, won't that kill the, the switch? I, it's been two years old. No, it's not going to. It'll, it'll just put a number on the weeds and only kills a certain amount of weeds. And, uh, and that's why we talk about quinchloric. Quinchloric is more of a May thing. We'll talk about then for uh, switchgrass. But uh, quinchloric will attack foxtail, a lot of broad leaves. It's a lot stronger, more potent than simazine. You spray it at the third leaf. Very important that on your second year switch, meaning second growing season, you spray only four to 4.5 to 6 ounces per acre, 7 to 9 ounces if it's your third growing season or later. But it's very important that you don't overlap. So you need to use foam markers, dye in your, in your tank, uh, so you don't overlap because then you're doubling up your spray amount. You'd rather leave a, st a strip in between that doesn't kill the weeds, kill it the following year or later in the year or something because you don't want to spray and double up your, your spraying. You have to spray it in the third leaf, which is probably about mid-May in most areas, early to mid-May. Um, you can't spray it on when it's really young in the spring. It's third leaf stage. So think about that. That's, you know, that's a May thing, not an April thing, but uh, a lot more powerful than simazine. So it's an incredible one-two punch if you talk about the two for a, a switchgrass area. Sorry to interrupt, but we have a lot going on with this food plot and many more. I can't wait to plant this. Check out what we're planting on WHS Wildlife Blends. All 12 of our blends are out. You can order bulk seed, buckwheat, and rye. Check it out, we have a new website. If you click on seed on the whitehabitatsolutions.com, it'll take you right to the, the new blend site. Appreciate you for checking it out and taking the time to watch us. But not clethodim. Clethodim is a grass specific herbicide that'll kill your switch. So I hope you, I confuse the two sometimes. I just don't confuse the two. I'm sorry if I ever do that, but um, frost seeding, clover and switch. You know, frost seed, it doesn't apply that you have to have frost and freeze available. now. For example, our switchgrass. There's switchgrass out there that we've seen lately, it's 70% hard seed. We're getting labels shown to us, this, this brand is 70% hard seed. What is yours? Ours is 10% hard seed, what does that mean? Our switchgrass does not need to go through frost and freeze to stratify it to get it to open and be viable. If you have 70% hard seed, 50% hard seed, 80%, 90, what that means is that seed needs to go through extensive frost and freeze and moisture and it's probably not going to germinate till the following year. So when we're putting switchgrass out in April, we just want it to get moist, wet, 
and the soil temperature change, which isn't going to happen until end of May, early June anyways. So we're still way ahead of the game. Technically frost seeding because there'll probably be some frost and freeze around, but it's not needed, frost or freeze that is, to actually germinate it, especially on the soft seed. So make sure, again, read your label, folks. It's very critical. Percentage of hard seed's critical. We have 10% hard seed in our switch. That's it. Some companies has, have as high as 70 and 80% hard seed. Be very wary. That will not germinate for another year. Lots of weeds can take over by then. Switchgrass is a smother crop if you let it take hold and get established. But if you wait a whole year for it to germinate, don't expect it to not get outcompeted by weeds. It's also a great time to frost seed clover. You can frost seed clover, you can broadcast clover in May, even if it's, clover doesn't need to go through frost and freeze, it just needs moisture. Again, clover is not gonna germinate until the soil temperatures are hot. So you don't need to frost seed clover. Switchgrass, it's hard seed, you do. So clover, you can actually throw on the ground in June before a bunch of big rain, and it's gonna grow. The problem is in the spring with clover is you need to have some type of protection crop, a nurse crop, like 50 pounds of oats per acre. So you wait on the oats because if you spread your oats in April and you get numerous frosts and freezes afterwards and you get a little germination in there during a the warm up, you can actually kill your oats. So wait till more like mid-May to spread your oats. But even if you waited till May to broadcast your clover and oats at the same time, you're gonna be fine. Let me repeat, clover does not need to go through a frost seed stage, it needs, just needs moisture. And it doesn't need much moisture at all. There's times where you can till your ground, run over it with a Packer Max, put those grooves in there, not have any moisture, just morning dews, throw your clover in, they all settle down in each one of those V's and without or those little grooves there in the soil, without any rain, it actually germinates. It doesn't take a lot. But again, it's not going to grow earlier because you frost seed. It's not going to grow until the soil temperature hits. And then all that clover is viable for germination. It's not like hard seed switchgrass. It'll germinate right away. So I hope you understand that. People talk about frost seed and clover. Why? It's not going to actually germinate for about a month and a half, usually two months, after spring green up, after that frost and freeze is present in the ground. So great time to put it out because there's no snow. That's the key, you can just get it out right away and take care of your weeds later. But even if you have a weedy field, you can spray sometime late April when that first, those first weeds are eight, 10 inches tall, spray with just Roundup 2,4-D. And then let's say you want to wait four weeks and get another spraying, like we do for switchgrass sometimes. Okay, you don't want to put Simazine on an area where you're putting clover, it'll kill your clover when it comes up. You don't want to put 2,4-D down if you're going to be putting clover down at the same time. You can put glyphosate down. Glyphosate's a weak herbicide, I hope, folks get that into their heads. Glyphosate's a weak herbicide. It gets neutralized by soil. It doesn't stay in the soil. 2,4-D stays two weeks, three weeks. Simazine stays 90 days. I've literally been to a property lately where they wouldn't allow glyphosate because of all the hype, but they'd allow Simazine and 2,4-D. If it was my property, personally, I'd rather cut out the 2,4-D and the Simazine because that's going to the quinchloric. That's going to be much more powerful and stay in the, in the soil a lot longer, kill a lot more stuff. Even if you mix soil particles with it, it'll kill things. Glyphosate doesn't. You mix soil particles with it in a tank, it neutralizes and won't allow the glyphosate to kill any weeds. Folks, if it's not killing weeds, it ain't that powerful compared to some of these other chemicals. So think about that. But bottom line is, get that clover down after a couple springs. Maybe it's mid-May still. You have a lot of rain coming, you're gonna get a great catch, but you have to have that nurse crop. 50 pounds of oats per acre in the spring, and then you can mow that out after a couple months or spray it with a grass-specific herbicide, which again is a lot more powerful than glyphosate. Glyphosate's kind of a you know, jack of all trades, but master of none type thing, where it, it uh, does well against broadleafs, but it won't kill clover. It'll set it back. Doesn't kill smartweed. Doesn't kill pigweed unless it's in its very early stages, when it's three, four inches high. When it gets older, it can't. So just think about that. Make sure you have weed control for your clover. But April, if you have weed control, it's a great time to uh, get your seed on the soil. Or maybe you want to wait till May and get some weed control. Turkey cams this is a time when we're putting our trail cameras out, specifically setting them on uh, turkey areas where they're feeding, next to where they're roo roosting. All those fly down areas where they're landing and strutting and we love getting our turkey uh, trail cameras out and getting the reveals on there making sure we're watching our turkeys 
and uh, and so we're taking a lot of cameras out of the woods because if they're not if they're on scrapes in the woods and in our various uh, benches we don't need them there right now we might put them later you start to recognize individual bucks especially big ones more mid June to late June so that's the time where we're putting them back in the woods for deer on trail cameras and that's about the same time we're moving them off turkey areas too which are more open areas and field corners things like that where you expect your favorite turkey hunts number four raking out water holes once the ice is gone you know there's not as much to do in April so it's a great time to drive around with a rake and rake out your water holes get the sticks debris walnuts whatever garbage might be in those water holes get them out just rake them out and then just let it go you're cleaning up the water by raking out leaves and sticks and debris that's blown in there pine needles like i said walnuts whatever it might be getting those out of there and then just let it go deer will like it deer will appreciate it um, that's all you really need to do that's all we do if we do that at all ordering food plot seed this is a big thing the last couple of years. We have our food plot company. What I'm saying is you don't need to go out and order a whole bunch of seed in April. We're the type of company that contract to have seed available, all our blends. Our goal is to never run out. Think about all these food plot company seed blends that run out. Seems like on a two week basis. What happens with your favorite diner restaurant when you go in there and your favorite dish keeps running out? It's not on the menu because they're out of supplies. You end up not going back to that restaurant. We never want that, that to happen again. We don't want our seed running out, so we contract with a large wholesaler to make sure, and we pay a lot of money for our seed and buy it in large orders so that we can ensure that you have seed available year round. So watch for that. We'll even carry a few at Christmas time if you want to look for different seeds that we might have available at that time. In an off time for actually planting, we still want to have seed available for you and never run out of any of our blends. We have 12 blends currently right now, not to mention our bulk seed in uh, buckwheat and rye that you can order by the pallet. So we have that available, we plan to make it available. So no reason like in the past to run out in April, March and get all your seed. We have it available, we'll happily ship to it. We're selling a lot right now, but uh, you don't need to rush and order it and think that we're gonna run out. We're gonna run out, maybe other companies will, but we're not running out, that's for sure. Tree and shrub plantings. This is the time we plant. We're ordering in March and uh, especially before. But I know we're planting big rock tree circles of browsable shrubs and trees that we need to fence off. Tom and Seth are coming out and helping out with that. We're getting uh, 250 four-year-old Norway spruce planted for road edging and then pockets out in some of our fields. We're turning in back into wildlife habitat. Kind of has been open. We already have it surrounded in switchgrass. We're going to put some switchgrass pockets, some shrub and tree pockets, some conifer pockets, and then early successional growth. So we have that perfect combination of screening off the area, but then allowing it to fill in. But we can't wait to plant. That's going to be more of a mid to late April thing. And uh, you really want to get those in the, tr in the ground early, whether it's shrubs or trees. So you can take it a time, you can take advantage of a time when they're in their dormancy, they're not wanting to bloom and, and uh, leaf out yet. But then at the same time, it's at a time when you're going to get a lot of moisture coming and a lot of warmth coming to explode the growth on those plants and make sure that you increase their survive, survivability in April is that time. And for some of you in the South, I'm sure that March is that time. So it's really uh, happening for tree planting right around now, right now. And uh, that gets me back to the fishing. I can't wait to fish. We had a great time Monday getting out on the water and catching some perch and some walleye. And um, you can bet I'll be getting that stuff together in April and, and ready for the walleye opener in Canada and around here in the Mississippi. We can't wait. I know Dylan can't and some of you guys out there are big fishermen. That's what I do for fun. That's my relaxation. Um, get out on the water and fish. I love just staring at the water, bobbing up and down with the waves and uh, Taking a jig off the bottom and a drop off at 24 feet. I'm thinking about one drop off in particular, maybe with a, a jig and wrap or a small uh, lead head jig and maybe a minnow on it or something like that or a night crawler. So I can't wait. Uh, that's coming soon. And I'm going to make sure I'm a little bit more on time this year. So April deer chores. Not as much to do as some of the other months, but some exciting things. And we're really enjoying this transition from snow to no snow. Actually good shed hunting time. Birds out in the woods, tweeting here and there, hearing the sounds of spring. And you can bet by the end of April, we'll hear our first uh, Tom Goblin. So that'd be a good thing too. Enjoy April. Hope you get a lot done. And you're following along with these deer chores each and every month. Now, I don't know if you've checked out our main website lately, whitehabitatsolutions.com, but we've really had a lot going on, including hats, books, our web class, and certainly our new seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. When you click on seed on our site, it'll take you right to our brand new site, 
for the seed company. We have all 12 blends available. So check it all out though. I encourage you, I appreciate you checking it out. Whether you buy anything or not, really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.